In this video, we're going to look at hypothesis testing. A hypothesis test is a mathematical test where we check whether something we believe is true based on a sample of results. So we're going to look at the first stages of a hypothesis test now, which is writing down a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis and deciding whether we've got a one tail or a two tail test. So this question says the probability of a train being late is usually 0.2. Alex thinks the chance of trains being late has increased. Write down a suitable null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis we write as H0. That's what we believe to be true. So before we've got any evidence, this is what we think is true. So that will be that the probability is equal to 0 0.2. The alternative hypothesis is what will be true if we reject the null hypothesis. And Alex thinks the chance of the trains being late has increased. So that would mean that the probability is now bigger than 0 0.2. State whether it's a one tail or a two tail test. Now, where the alternative hypothesis is either just bigger than or just less than, it's a one tail test. We're only looking at one side. We're only looking at whether it's increased. So if we're only looking at whether it's increased, we're only looking at the extreme values that are bigger. So it's a one tail test. If we were looking at extreme values on both sides, so if it was either bigger or smaller, that would be two tails. Okay, here's another similar question. So this time the probability of a red sweet in a batch of sweets is usually 0 0.25. So that's going to be our null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is that the probability is 0 0.25. The company wants to test if the proportion of sweets, red sweets, being produced has changed. And so we don't care if it's increased or decreased this time. So our alternative hypothesis is that the probability is not equal to 0 0.25. And we're gonna look at extreme values on both sides. So whether we're getting too many red sweets or too few red sweets. And that makes it a two tower test. Okay, now we're going to look at going the whole way through the hypothesis testing process. So here's our question. The probability of a train being late is usually 0 0.2. And that is our null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is that the probability is 0 0.2. And Alex thinks the chance of the trains being late is increased. So that gave us our alternative hypothesis that the probability is bigger than 0 0.2. And we're only going to look at extreme values in one direction. So it's a one tail test. Okay, so we're going to run a test and we're going to test at the 5% significance level. That means in a random test, we're going to be looking at the results we get only 5% of the time. So the 5% of the most extreme values, we're going to identify what those 5% of the most extreme values are, and we're going to call that our critical region. And if our test result falls within the critical region, then we can accept the alternative hypothesis. If it doesn't, we will accept the null hypothesis. So in our test, we have 10 pieces of data, 10 days. So n is 10. So we need to find a table where n is 10. And I've already 
got that table for you. It will be in your formula book. There'll be all these different tables and there'll be one with 10 possible outcomes and it's 10. So we'll go to that one this time. And the null hypothesis is 0 0.2. So we're looking at 0 0.2 and we want the 5% of the most extreme values at the top. So this is a cumulative table. So when um, there'll be no lates, 10.74% of the time, there'll be zero or one lates, 37.58. There'll be zero or one or two lates, 67.78% of the time, and so on. So we're going to identify the 5% of the highest values. So the most extreme values at the top. And we can see that there was four or less 96.72% of the time. So if there are four or less 96.72% of the time, that means there's five or more. So I'll write critical region and it's X is bigger or equal to five. So if there's four or less, 96.72% of the time, that means there's five or more. That'd be 0 0.0328. So there'll be five or more, 3.28% of the time. So it's actually, the actual significance level here is 3.28%. So we go for whichever one, goes under 5%. We couldn't have used the one above because that would have been 12%. And that's not below 5. Um, so there's our critical region. We've identified our critical region. And then we look at the test. So the train was late 5 days out of 10. So that's within the critical region. So that does support our alternative hypothesis. So Alex is correct. This supports Alex's claim. This supports Alex's claim. We can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. Okay, here's our second question. The probability of a red sweet is usually 0 0.25. So a null hypothesis, the probability is equal to 0 0.25. The company wants to test the proportion of red sweets if it's changed. So this is a two-tail test and our alternative hypothesis is that the probability is not equal to 0 0.25. So it's a two-tail test and that means we're going to look at extreme values on both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this 5% into 2.5% and find the 2.5% of the lowest values and 2.5% of the highest values. So we've got two critical regions this time. And n is 40, so we find the table where n is 40. And our null hypothesis, 0 0.25. And we're looking at 2.5% at the top and 2.5% at the bottom. So we've got 1.6% here. The next one up is 4.3%. So that means critical regions, critical regions. So we have x is less than or equal to 4. So this is cumulative, remember. So we've got 1.6% up to 4. And if we go up to 5, that will be 4.3%. So x is less than or equal to 4. And then we look at the top. So we're looking for 2.5%. 2.5% 2 
That's not quite enough, 97.38%. So we're going we're gonna to look at this one, the 98.84%. So if 16 and less is 98.84%, that means our critical region is 17 or more. And that will be 1 minus this. So that will be 1.16%. So there are critical regions. So if our sample, our random sample, is in these critical regions, then we reject the null hypothesis and support the alternative hypothesis. So in our test, six are red, and that isn't in the critical regions, it's in the acceptable region. So six is in the acceptable region which means we accept the null hypothesis. Accept the null hypothesis. So we don't have any evidence to say that the proportion of red sweets has changed.